Hey, this is Brian Duggan from the DIT School of Computing. This is a little video demo of a VOR project that I've been working on. This VOR project, it's all written in C++ and it uses a custom engine called BGE, which is an engine that I use to teach some of my games development courses in DIT. Um, it's C++, uses OpenGL for the rendering, uses um, SDL and uses the GLM Maths library and also the Bullet Physics engine. It's all available under an MIT license up on my Git repository and you can download all the source code from my blog, which is brianduggan.org. I'm also using the Oculus Rift DK2 um, with the latest version of the Oculus SDK and this is the camera that comes with the latest DK2 which is used for head position tracking. Um, you'll notice on the front of this DK2 is sellotaped a leap motion sensor. So I'm also using the latest version of the leap motion, the beta version of the leap motion SDK2. Um, I've ordered the new mount for the leap motion for head mounted displays. It hasn't arrived yet, so I'm just doing this demo with a sellotaped leap motion to the front of my uh, DK2. So um, I'm going to fraps this demo. So when you look at the demo, you'll notice there might be a small bit of latency and also you'll notice a lot of visual visual artifacts i don't see those when i'm actually wearing the dk2 for me i just feel like and i look like i'm in a virtual scene and there's almost no lag the lag you'll also notice you might get a little bit of lag due to the fact that i'm running fraps in order to capture the video so anyway i'll get started with the demo i'll just put on my oculus rift Okay, so as you can see, I have this little virtual um, world and I've got these little objects which are rendered using OpenGL and they're physically simulated using the bullet physics engine. So just to show you the first thing that I'm doing here, I, I'm able to move left and right in my chair here. I'm just leaning to the left and leaning to the right and leaning forward and backwards. And as you can see, my position has been tracked by the Oculus Rift camera. So I found this is uh, one of the big advances with the DK2 over the DK1 and that's the position tracking which tends to eliminate a lot of the rift sickness which you used to get if you, if you stay too long in DK1 Oculus Rift experiences. Um, okay, so you're able, yeah obviously I can, I can move to the left and I can rotate my head to the left, rotate my head to the right and the, the rift is uh, tracking my head orientation and position. It's pretty much a lag-free experience in this demo, even though there might be a little bit of lag, and that's just because I'm running fraps to capture the video here. All right, so I'm gonna bring my hands into the scene. So in order to bring my hands into the scene, I'm just gonna bring my hands up in front of my face. And you can see I've got my left hand, my right hand. Another thing here, there's almost no lag. The Leap SDK is really, really fast at uh, tracking these hand positions with almost no lag. So I'm able to move my physical hand in the real world and my virtual hands in this simulation move almost instantly. There's, there's almost no noticeable lag and it really, really enhances the sense of immersion in the virtual, virtual world that you have. I just made these little sort of Terminator style hands, you know, just tracking the positions and orientations of the joints on the hand. I've noticed that the leap motion hand skeletal tracking sometimes like now is actually really, really good. Other times it's not so good and I haven't quite figured out if it's a lighting issue or a problem with my, my leap or I guess the SDK will also improve, um, you know, because it's just a beta version of this next SDK. But sometimes, like right now, it's actually really accurate. You can notice I'm able to turn my hands around and also, yeah, you'll see I've got little virtual elbows as well. And yeah, I can do various different things with my hands. Um, sometimes, yeah, when the hand tracking gets a little bit screwed up, just shaking your hands around seems to reset things. All right, so I can articulate each of my fingers individually. Um, and then I'm able to interact with these physical objects as well. So these are, these are my real hands interacting with these virtual objects. Um, under the scene and capture these, catch these little virtual objects. It's just the physical, you know, the uh, physics simulation. Um, one thing you can do as well, if you have a game controller attached in the simulation, is that you can actually move your, move yourself around in the scene using the game controller. So you just look at where you want to go and you just use the left stick on an Xbox game controller and you're able to move around the scene. So sometimes you can reach underneath and lift things up like this works 
prototypes are really cool. Here we go. I'm lifting up this virtual car. So, um, yeah, just at the moment, the reason why I've only got one hand is because my left hand is actually holding a game controller. Um, I've put a couple of little gestures into this game. There's, there's, the Leap can also detect various different gestures. I just put a little rotation gesture. So if I do this rotation for one second, come on. Here we go. That spawns a virtual car, and it just spawns it wherever I'm looking in the scene. So if I look over here, and then I do my little spinny thing, I get another virtual car. There's another one, and you can also fly down and interact with those virtual cars with your real hands. There we go. That is pretty awesome, and a really, really good sense of VR, a good sense of immersion in this VR scene. The other thing, I th if I think this should work, if I do a, a counterclockwise rotation, yeah, I get random, ooh, what's that? Oh my God, a giant mushroom. You get random 3D objects. So this is just from my little collection of 3D objects. Most of these come from the computer game Elite. So over there you see a Thargoid, and these are actually all thanks to a guy called Andy Duplain from Neural Technologies. He sent me all these models from a screensaver that he's made for Android, it's really nice. I'll actually get rid of that mushroom over there. It's cool, in VR it looks great. I'm gonna come over here and hit it away with my hand. Go away, mushroom. There we go, look at that. Yeah, so that 3D model was actually made by my friend Scott Baker and we did it for a Games Jam project that we made last summer. A uh, thing called the Power of the Mushroom. I'll try and make some more random 3D objects. Come on, hand. Oh, that's, I wanna do counterclockwise and see what else I get. If I'm lucky here, I'll get a Coriolis. Okay, another spaceship. Okay, what's that, a crate maybe? Uh, fish! I really want a Cobra Mark III or a Coriolis so I can pick them up and play with them. That's fun, but I want a Coriolis. Come on, hand. Another fish. Another fish! These are just randomly selected. Oh, another Thargoid. Give me a Coriolis. Okay, what's that? Well, that's not too bad. That's um, is that a Viper or a, I don't know what it is. Some, some spaceship anyway. I'll do one more and then I better wrap this demo up. Last time I did this, I just got loads and loads of Coriolises. Coriolite. Like. My magic is not good today. Okay, what's that? That looks good. Cool. All right, um, yeah, I guess I better leave it at that. You can download all the source code from this demo from my GitHub repository. I'll put the link up actually on my blog, which is just at Brian Duggan, what's Brian with a Y, uh, D-U-G-G-A-N.org. And um, uh, yeah, I'll also put binaries up there as well if you want to download and try them out. Cool, thanks for watching.